Welcome to this SCORE webinar. Uh, this is the first in a series on ownership design uh, provided through SCORE Mentors Green Bay. As an attorney, I will start with a disclaimer that this is you know, presented for informational purpose only. You should always talk with an attorney um, for a specific specific information, um, you know, neither the presentation or um, or myself are presenting it as your attorney. So don't take it as an advice. It is not. Um, also, my touch on some Colorado specific stuff, because some of my colleagues are in Colorado, some of my team's clients are in Colorado. Uh, I am not a licensed attorney in Colorado. I'm licensed in Texas and Ohio, where I'm currently based. Um, that's so you know, so we're all clear on the same page. Lori, I'll tell you, um, just go ahead. Thank you. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about cooperatives. Um, and I know you had a, a previous presentation about that. So I you know I got pulled into this work, super exciting. And initially I was kind of hesitant uh, by John Pollard and their team. Um, and then through the work that EF Machinik had been doing with them, with you know. They're running and down, starting this amazing project um, for a few years, working that up. Um, we think this could be a cooperative. Um, can we do this? And at the time, um, there wasn't legal entities for uh, that were DAO specific and uh, specific. And today there are. And I'll, I'll just kind of briefly touch on that. But I wanted to show you, um, and I think I missed the slide I wanted. So. Uh, I'll, I'll send that to you, Lori, but um, you know, the same way that cooperatives can mean several things, DAO can also mean several things. So I hope that the other folks, uh, you can say on that one, I'll use that, but um, can, can mean several different uh, aspects depending on who you're talking with. So for cooperatives, they can be statutory business entities. So they can be, you know, that's when we're talking about cooperative corporation, limited cooperative association. They are, and the statute has created that as a business, a legal business entity. Um, that can be also a set of practice and values. And that will be in a second, uh, the next slide. Um, and those principles can be, there are several different types, but the Rushdale principles have been adopted by uh, most of the cooperatives as baseline principles. They agree that if you're a cooperative, you're likely uh, subscribing to these principles. And, um, and as a statutory business entities, as I mentioned, uh, outside of the big picture cooperative corporation and the limited cooperative association, you can still have very kind of industry specific um, agricultural cooperatives, um, and other uh, sectors that have uh, lobbied enough to have their specific regulation that takes in consideration some of their specific needs. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing up the seven cooperative principles is because, you know, I think DAOs can also be uh, at this point and not when I started uh, this work a, a year ago, but then uh, with Opolis a couple of years ago, um, they were not statutory business entities. Nowadays, they can be a Wyoming DAO LLC. We can call that a statutory entity for a DAO. Um, Tennessee has adopted a, a similar entity as well. Uh, Vermont, you, you can say that. Thank you. Uh, Vermont um, have adopted also kind of a little bit more DAO specific, which really are LLCs with features. Uh, like they recognize smart contract uh, features, for instance. Um, so we can say that they reflect each other in that sense. Um, and that's where it starts overlapping with um, you know, the basic principles that hopefully we'll hear from the other folks on the centralized, the autonomous aspect, uh, trust list, the permissions list. I, I, I will not try to repeat that. Um, the members economic participation. So how do they overlap? Um, Laura, you can go ahead, please. On um, There are some designs and features that we can kind of see operating in real life. So DAOs, uh, you know, operating on Discord or whatever other means, um, electronic and online means that they adopt, uh, they operate for the most part and those I have worked with for the benefit of their members. And again, bringing up the cooperative, it's kind of similar when you hear, you know, you, you don't hear the label and you hear, 
that's one member, they have a vote. Uh, it's this operation, this collaboration is carried for the benefit of its members. Um, those start to sound like cooperatives and those are cooperative um, features for the legal entity type. Those are also features for the cooperative that aren't in the regulation. For DAOs, that's not the case. So not all DAOs um, as a legal entity to the extent that we can call it a legal entity and we can uh, touch about that uh, on that later. To the extent that that is one, the law hasn't regulated what they are, what that means. And I know John hopefully will talk about the uh, broader approach to you know, decentralized organizations that are their own entity that kind of just adopt principles and have language specific. But as of today, there isn't a good regulation that does that. So the cooperative um, can, uh, the cooperative statute, because it provides so much more uh, clarity, has worked um, for the groups, again, that are operating for the benefit of their members. Uh, Lori, can you skip, please? Yes. Um, so those are some of the features that we look at, um, you know, member participation, as I mentioned. So that means governance, that means financial rewards and distribution. Um, the management is typically managed and as in their daily operations and how and in decision-making process through the members as well, through proposals. Um, they seek transparency and some of the uh, cooperative statutes actually support that, uh, the DAOs that adopt that as a legal entity type and seeking transparency. And maybe maybe too much to the extent that a lot of DAO members want to retain their anonymity um, and that you know Colorado, for instance, requires name and addresses um, of the members to be kept by the entity. Um, and, and really all the LCA regulation typically does. So it's not a, a, a good or bad feature from Colorado law. It is um, just what we operate and operate in. So um, I wanted to kind of place the DAO cooperatives um, in kind of this continuum of cooperative development because we have had these uh, more traditional cooperatives that you know, like milk and uh, purchasing cooperatives, agricultural cooperatives. There's this whole set of cooperatives that came before with work, then worker cooperatives where you start seeing more the benefit of the workers, um, whether they're employees or not, but for the benefit of their members. And then the past 10 years, you started seeing a lot of uh, multi-stakeholders. So we have, um, we have, uh, the workers, and then we have consumers. Think about a grocery store that is community and worker owned. Uh, and then we're seeing all those interests at the table being part of the same entity, where, what means that sometimes their interests may be opposite, but they're trying to work together. Um, then we're seeing platform cooperatives with um, Stocksy and other groups that operate online. Discos, for instance, as well, will fit them into platform cooperatives. They are cooperatives that may look like any other, but they operate using the internet as part of how they do business. And then the DAO cooperatives that really are a group of people um, trying to accomplish a good, they adopt a set of values that we identify with Web3 or blockchain um, principles or, or values generally. And then that can fit into the cooperative spectrum in that they are made or created for the benefit of their members. And I'm getting to the end. Um, you know, when when we're trying to when we're working with a DAO group, um, next slide, please. Um, we kind of talk them through and that want to adopt the limited cooperative association or a cooperative legal entity type for their business. And you know, you know the interest here is just protecting from risk and liability, right? If you don't form a legal entity for your DAO, you're likely be, gonna be considered by um, by the courts, by just and operationally as a general partnership, everybody that's engaged with it is personally liable. We have recent cases where that has been uh, punished. So we, we want to make sure that the members can participate without personal liability and adopting a legal entity type, be it an LLC or a cooperative model, that what's protecting each one of it, their, the members from personal liability for the risks or liabilities of the group operating together. So we look at um, whether 
what are the member requirements for participation or to receive distribution and benefits? Um, how do they interact um, and make decisions together? Will they have, um, how big are they gonna be? Because if that's a worker cooperative type um, and it's a small team, maybe it's a collective board where everybody is considered part of the board. So you really operate as a collective versus having to put a board in place, which the regulation usually require. And now you're asking yourselves about whether you're decentralized and not and how much uh, decentralization there is. Um, so those are some of the features or the design questions that we ask while working with those um, groups and identified some of the challenges that, have, that we have is um, tracking that relationship, the interaction with folks being fully remote, um, people operating online and having less of the individual trust. What does that mean for the operation of, of and success of this group? Um, but also the inability sometimes or a lack of interest in sharing personal information and how does that impact the choice of uh, a legal entity type as well because of requirement compliance, right, with KYC and, and just kind of state law like those that require a name and address to be kept. Um, so we're doing a lot of advocacy around that with public agencies to know, is this an actual requirement or um, is this something that would be nice to have? Could we not have it until there's a need to have it? And Colorado uh, agencies have been open to um, you know, using maybe a third party um, identity, third party uh, app or third party service provider that can confirm identity, but keep that private from the other members or from the entity up to the time where there is an actual action that requires that information to be shared. So providing some extra protection. Um, so when you get the slides, you're gonna see a little bit more information or how we frame the types of doubt based on what I have seen. So like, are they data marketing or a worker type of DAOs? And if you're looking into that, um, to adopt an entity type like a cooperative one, you, this is helpful. Uh, and that's the next slide. Uh, and to um, Lori, to show kind of like, well, this is maybe how I identify my DAO there. Um, and this is kind of maybe the, equivalent in cooperative language um, because there are not a lot of attorneys doing this work. So if you can help do some of that translation that helps you and helps the attorney to work with you on that work as well. Not a requirement, but it's if you name and put some labels, sometimes it helps um, make it work. So that's all I have for now. I don't know if I took too much time or not, but hopefully the legal is not what's on your way of making this work. Legal should really just be one more feature that you're looking at um, when you're trying to, to be successful.